Okay, so let's let's get started. Um, first off, um, I hope you've all had a wonderful summer. Welcome, welcome. Um, uh, my name is Mark Ford. If I haven't met some of you uh, uh, directly uh, since your audition or so, uh, we're just so excited that you're going to be with us. Those of you that are new, incoming freshmen, um, I want to talk just a little bit about who we are and uh, what our goals are for in general, and then allow, allow us to move through this agenda to help you know how to deal with the auditions, setting up your practice rooms, your lessons, being able to uh, uh, deal with all the different ensemble auditions and just get some information that may help. Okay, so just, just, just to kind of clarify, what I wrote to you in that email is so important to us about creating an environment that's going to allow you to explore your musical uh, potential. I mean, really, that's what our job is. Uh, our job is not to tell you that this is the right way and that's the wrong way. Of course, there's always going to be several ways to be able to approach any type of musical challenge. But the real goal here is to create situations where you're going to be able to grow um, and explore your musical potential, because that's what's going to give our foundation. And that's what we've done for decades. Uh, North Texas has been a leader in uh, percussion performance and education for over 50 years. So we, uh, we feel very comfortable. We're, we're, you're work, gonna be working with a faculty that is seasoned. Goodness, uh, we're just so, such a great family. Many of us have been teaching together for years and years. Uh, we do have a lot of several new people this, this fall, which is going to really uh, give us a lot of new ideas, new blood, new, new um, musical backgrounds. And I'm gonna introduce them to you right now. But first I'll start with our returning faculty who are uh, in alphabetical order. Not all of them can be here with us tonight. Our um, African master drummer, Gideon Alawari, um, is uh, with us, of course, in the in the fall and spring. He's not here tonight. Jose Aponte uh, directs our Afro-Cuban and Brazilian ensembles and the Latin jazz ensembles. He's an incredible drum set player and hand percussionist. Uh, Jose, welcome. I think you're there. Hello, hello, hello everybody. I hope <laughs> everybody have a good summer. And uh, we are ready to start the semester again and hit this thing. <laughs> uh, and our next uh, faculty member is Steve Barnes, a uh, um, wonderful drum set instructor for us. Steve, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, Steve. Great to see you. Our, um, our lead drum set instructor, uh, Quincy Davis, uh, amazing performer has been, in fact, he's had an incredible summer. I've been watching him on social media and just really doing some amazing things. Quincy, are you there? Uh, he he couldn't be here, but his twin brother's here. Hi, his twin brother. There hey, is. everyone. Looking forward to uh, another school year. Looking forward to it. All right, double drumming. All right, man. Uh, Stockton Helbing uh, is a, another one of our world-class drum set uh, teachers. Stockton, are you there? Uh, yeah, he told me he was going to be kind of in and out. Um, Looks like straight from Indianapolis, Paul Rennick is with us. Yes, straight from the back of the Rockstar tour bus. Okay, <laughs> Paul's Good there to see for <laughs> with, We have many students uh, that are uh, playing in DCI uh, cores this summer. The most students probably in one core would be Santa Clara, and that's Paul and Sandy Rennick. I don't know, is Sandy uh, with us tonight? First of all, it's good to see you, Mark, but it is not tonight. It is one o'clock in the afternoon. Feels for like those of us. Uh, <laughs> the sun has gone down. <laughs> good to see everybody. Nice and uh, yeah, good you to see you. Like guys. You look like you're in a very and, exotic uh, place there, though. I am. This too is almost Indianapolis. This is Denton. This is what Denton looked. It turned into this while you were away this summer, Mark. So it's funny because <laughs> the weather didn't show that part. Okay. All right. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, Sandy. Uh, Ed Smith is our um, jazz vibraphone instructor and world-class gamelan uh, instructor. Just an amazing musician. Ed, are you with us? I don't. I, I don't think he's with us tonight. And then our last um, uh, uh, faculty member returning is Puvalar Shriji. He instructs our South Indian ensemble. Does lessons with rhythmic development. He's incredible. Uh, Shriji, are you there? 
Okay. All right. Now we're going to get to um, our new faculty. We're so proud and honored to introduce to you uh, Dr. Dave Hall. Dave is joining the UNT percussion faculty this fall uh, in his first semester. He's been teaching at the University of Nebraska and Lincoln and uh, doing an incredible job there. He's a wonderful composer, performer, and, and instructor. If you'd please welcome Dr. Dave Hall. Hi, everybody. Great to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, Professor Ford uh, didn't mention that I did my doctorate at North Texas and had just the best time as a student um, at this institution and can't wait to be back teaching profession at the College of Music at UNT. Wonderful. Dave is going to be directing the UNT Percussion Ensemble this fall and teaching lessons. Uh, so we're so excited to have you have you back, Dave. Yeah, wonderful. Also, we have a new addition to our faculty and um, is Dr. Michael Crawford. Um, Michael is working part-time with the music education. Uh, he's, he is um, supervising student teachers for the music ed division, but he's also teaching one of our percussion methods courses, which he's done for the last couple of years. And um, he's gonna be coordinating the methods classes. Uh, Michael and I have kind of reorganized and restructured that class in the last couple of years. Uh, so he has comes to us with a lot of experience teaching uh, at the high school level. And now he's uh, transferred and finished his doctorate at UNT and now will be working at UNT. He's also gonna be in charge of uh, maintaining uh, or at least identifying issues with instrumentation and percussion uh, with repair. And uh, so he's going to um, help us to be on track to make sure we're buying what we need when we need it. And uh, which we've all done as faculty members, but it's just so, so great to have Michael on board doing all these wonderful things. Michael, are you there? I am here, yes. I, I too am on the road uh, traveling back on a family vacation, but happy to be here. Thanks for the introduction and looking forward to the semester beginning. And we are too, Michael. So I was so excited to have you with us. And then um, directing the two o'clock steel drum band is Justin Matthews. Justin is a, an alum of UNT, studied steel drums with Andy Norell in Paris, France after he graduated and is just doing some amazing things. He's teaching in Prosper um, and teaching lessons over there, but uh, he's been uh, definitely my right-hand man with a two o'clock stand <laughs> in the last couple of years. And Justin, we're so happy that you're gonna be with us this fall. Thanks, Professor Ford. Hey, everybody, I'm looking forward to a great fall with you guys. Wonderful, wonderful. So some of you may be wondering like, okay, so Mark Ford, what are you doing? Because Dave is doing the ensemble and Justin's doing two o'clock steel band. I'm on a faculty development leave this uh, fall, which has never right. happened. It has happened before about 10 years ago, but always in the spring. But um, I would never choose to be gone in the fall because the fall is just, you know, it's just a lot of things to do to get everybody oriented and moving forward. But um, the UNT gave me this leave in 2019, and I'm finally going to be able to do it. And it's uh, it's all centered around uh, the premiere of my new marimba concerto um, with wind ensemble at the Melbourne Conservatory of Music in Australia. So I'll be down there for about five weeks uh, teaching and playing and premiering this work and then a clinic in New Zealand and, and one in Hawaii on the way back. So I have a really amazing trip. Uh, in front of me there. So, uh, but you're in great hands and I'm going to be involved with um, some of the details in behind everything, making sure everybody's signed up with the right lessons, etc. Okay, so let's move on here. I want to quickly introduce, uh, you guys don't have to speak. These are our TAs, our, our teaching assistants who are masters and doctoral candidates. Uh, George Warner is, te is teaching our eight o'clock steel band and lessons. Sophia Lowe, She's going to be involved with a percussion methods course and teaching lessons. Nathan Siegel is teaching lessons. Kayla Liptak is directing our percussion group and also teaching lessons. Our new TA, Denton Sutherland. Denton, we will say hi to you. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hello. Hello, Denton. Good to see you. Yeah, Denton's just finished his undergraduate at Indiana University and now is starting his master's degree at North Texas. And then Matt Knoll is uh, uh, teaching and writing for the marching uh, marching band, the drumline. 
the Green Brigade drum line, and he's teaching some lessons as well. Matt, are you there as well? Okay, he not, may not be here. Let's let's talk a little bit about the auditions because a lot of you have a lot of things coming in, You're move, moving into the dorms, and probably the biggest group of all is the marching band. So I've asked Dr. Daniel Cook to join us tonight. Uh, Dr. Cook is the director of the Green Brigade. He's done amazing work and um, including a trip with the marching band to Ireland for St. Patrick's Day um, parade, uh, which looked incredibly cool. I did not get to go on that one. So um, uh, Daniel, uh, would, Dr. Cook, would you like to take it over and talk about the process of what these students can expect? Hey, sure. Thanks, Professor Ford. Appreciate you having me here. And I'm so sorry that we didn't have unlimited seats on our on our Dublin adventure, although Paul and Sandy and I had a had a good time over there as well as a few hundred other of the of the students. It was a, it was a great trip. So, yes, we are entering the 111th season of the UNT Green Brigade. Last year, we celebrated 110. The group, so you know, is about 435 members large and features usually about 30 people in the battery or so and another 25 in the front ensemble any given year, plus or minus. Um, the first thing about GB that you should probably be aware of is that hopefully you've been getting a whole bunch of emails from me. And if you have not been getting a whole bunch of emails from me, then shoot me one right away so that you can be added to the list if you're going to be participating in that this year. Through those emails and through our GB website, hopefully you've already gotten a lot of information. But the summary of it that you need to know right now is that we are only 10 days away from summer band camp. The first percussion meeting for band camp will be on Thursday, August 18th at 5.30 p.m. in Vertman Hall. And that'll be with myself and uh, Professor Rennick here and uh, possibly Professor Hall, although I think I just sent him the message the other day after yours, Professor Ford. But in any case, that's kind of the kickoff meeting for percussionists, Vertman Hall, a week from Thursday, uh, the 18th at 5.30. After that, we'll do a little meet and greet and tell you about what's going to happen that evening. And that evening, we'll set up the audition rooms and get those going. Although I think maybe Professor Rennick has some more details, particularly about that. After that, it's a one-week camp of pretty much all days, three blocks a day, morning, evening, and afternoon. And then pretty much butts up right into school, at which we rehearse uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for a couple of hours, and then performances most Saturdays. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of it. Um, if you're not getting correspondence from me, shoot me a message right away. But I might at this point pass it off to Professor Rennick or Matt, if he's here, uh, to talk about the nitty gritty of what you guys are gonna wanna hear for those placement auditions for the battery in front. So uh, so Paul or Sandy or Matt or anybody, you wanna take it away with those specifics? Sure, I, I can provide some general information <laughs> that, that is pretty helpful, uh, which is, we, we have a large band. I think last year, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Cook, but it was 450 people in the band. We ended with 435, the biggest in, <laughs> in UNT history. We were busting at the scene. Right. So we're, <laughs> we're just in favor of providing experience for anyone who wants it. And I think that we're, uh, we're basically trying to fill the group up with as many students as we have instruments. So the audition is pretty straight ahead. It's, uh, it's not very... Um, it's, it's structured in the way that you provide some basic fundamental exercises and you get through a first round and then you're put together with different combinations of people and then go through a second round. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a multiple day audition. So you don't get your five minutes uh, and then play and then either get cut or accepted. We, we, we're a little more thorough than that so we can make sure we accept as many people as we can. But there is actually a one-page document on the Green Brigade website that explains the whole process. So uh, I'm not sure, Dr. Cook, can you maybe drop that in the chat? Uh, and that would be... Just just that link is. it for everybody there. So you can see the GB website, the GB email if you need question, have questions, and then the percussion page that he's talking about right now. Yeah. So if you do have any questions after reading that, then certainly we'll, we'll be available whenever you need but it should be very self-explanatory um, and, and a very simple, easy process that's transparent and easy for everyone to understand. Looking forward to it. Awesome, do you wanna take a few questions now, Paul, if anybody has questions about the auditions for marching band? 
Sure. Okay, so if you'd like to like to ask a question, now's a good time for Paul or Sandy or Dr. Cook. Okay. Um, well, I'm gonna tell you how you can get more information after, in just a few moments about all these auditions, not just the marching band audition. But right now I, I skipped over one um, topic a little earlier. I just wanted to go back because our instrumental studies chair um, is with us tonight, uh, Dr. Kim Leveno. Kim, uh, I just wanted to say hi to you and thank you for your support. Um, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. I just like, hey, everybody. I'm so um, thrilled that you're going to be at UNT. And I know many of you, and I'll get to know many of you, but I always love learning everything I need to know about percussion because I'm a clarinetist. So I'll just sit and listen. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Thanks for being with us. Also with us is Carol Overturf. And Carol has some really important information for you. I'm going to come back to auditions in just a moment, but I wanted uh, Kim and Carol to speak now. Uh, this way they could be free to, uh, to leave if they need to. Uh, it's a busy time of the year. Uh, Carol is our instrumental studies um, administrative assistant, and she's fantastic. Um, and uh, she's, we have restructured uh, how the practice from keys are going to be given out and also the university or the college of music has, you know, we used to use a program called room view. Well, that room view is gone completely now. And now we're into a program that's called schedule FM. I know it sounds like a bad radio station, but uh, Kim is going to explain to you how this is all going to work. And I'm going to be listening with all ears because it's new to me too. So Carol, uh, would you like to start? Sure thing. All right. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Carol Overturf. You can call me Mrs. O, Mrs. Overturf, Carol, whichever. It doesn't matter to me. Um, you can find my office at MU245. I'm super easy to find right in the front of the like to the left of the front doors when you walk in the music building. Um, I do a lot of just sort of directing traffic, answering general questions um, and helping with registration issues. Um, and uh, most importantly for you guys, uh, I help with, or I, I run the whole practice room key system basically. Um, so, um, so first of all, let's talk real quick about the types of practice rooms for those of you guys who are new. We have um, shared, first of all, you are not required to use our practice spaces by any means. If you have your own uh, equipment and spaces, you're always welcome to use that. Uh, but we do offer practice spaces for percussion students uh, and make those available to you. So we have shared spaces, so like several rooms that contain marimbas. Uh, and all of those are keyed the same. So if you check out a marimba key, that will open all of the marimba spaces and you can just go find uh, an empty room. Same goes for timpani, same goes for vibraphone. Steel band uh, is a singular large room, I believe. Uh, but again, there are lots of keys that's multiple, multiple people can use that space. And uh, you can, if you need that, you can check out a key and go use that whenever you need to. Um, the only private spaces we have are drum set rooms, and we are very limited in number on those. Um, so if you are not in drum set lessons this semester, I can't guarantee that uh, you would be able to get one of those. Um, but I will, uh, of course, check them out to others. They're not in drum set lessons if they're available after the about this into the first week of classes. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through this process, the new process really quickly. Um, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat as you go, and I will do my best to answer a few at the end. And of course, you can always contact me. Um, first of all, if you're not getting um, any, if you haven't been getting the emails from me that come through the Canvas course, the Percussion Info Canvas course, please reach out. I will definitely put my email in the uh, in the chat here in a few minutes when I'm done, and I want you to reach out if you're not hearing from me yet, because all of this information is going to be in writing available to you uh, via the Canvas course as well. Um, so like Professor Ford said, prior to this year, you guys had to come purchase practice room keys in my office each semester with cash or check. Now, um, all of basically the university's restructured fees, so your uh, your practice room fees are wrapped up as a part of your course fees for your lessons. So what that means is before 
you can uh, talk to me about keys, you need to be registered for your lessons or for capstone if that's what you're doing if you're about to graduate. Uh, so make sure that before you reach out to me about keys, you get yourself enrolled. Um, if you've got a unique situation, of course, always email me and we'll talk about it and deal with it on a case by case basis. But generally speaking, get yourself enrolled. Um, also uh, important to note um, is because we don't have these fees anymore, we're going to be very, very strict on uh, people who do not return keys because that's important. We need to protect our instruments uh, and make sure that we are uh, controlling who has access to these spaces. So um, if you, the new policy is, we don't have these little late fees anymore. The new policy is gonna be if the deadline happens and you have not returned your key, there is going to be a fee that is assessed directly to your student account of $150 per key immediately after that deadline. After that, you have 14 days, basically two weeks, to get in touch with me and get that key back to me. If you do, then I can request that the fee be removed. So you're not getting hit with all these late fees, but you're stuck having to wait for the registrar to take the hold off and it's going to be a real big pain in the butt. So don't be late when I give you a deadline. Listen to me, please, and make note of that. It's your job to do that. Um, if you don't return the key after 14 days, that fee stands and you have to pay it. And while that fee is on your account, you won't be able to register for new classes or do anything like that. So my hope is that this will keep you guys from having to pay those of you who are really good about managing your keys and keeping track of things. It'll keep you from having to pay all these little fees and do all these little things, um, but also keep our spaces safe. Um, and uh, so let's see, keys are always due back the Friday of finals week, every single semester for summer. That's the end of summer two, which is coming up this Friday. If you have summer keys, that's your last reminder right there. Um, and uh, let's see, the other thing I was gonna say about that is uh, drum set rooms. We're especially gonna be really tight on you guys. If you, if you don't get your key turned in within that 14 days, your stuff can be removed and sold via surplus. And we're gonna do that because we need to rekey the rooms and that money has to come from somewhere. So please don't just squat on a drum set room. These policies um, are not gonna be as lenient as the previous ones. Um, so now that I've said all the, the not so fun stuff, um, I'm going to show you a little bit about how you're actually going to request keys. Um, so Schedule FM is our new program, and I'm just going to share my screen here in just a second once I, okay. Okay, so can we everybody see my screen? Yes? No? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so what you're looking at right now is the like home screen for Schedule FM. Um, and this is this is the link which I'm gonna, which is already in the uh, PDF document I sent out um, with all the things that you have to do to request keys. Um, but I will drop it in the chat in a minute again as well. All of this is gonna go into the chat as well. Um, but basically all you need to do right now, um, Schedule FM is in its infancy right now. It's the only part that's really set up for you to use through your account as a student is the uh, room request portion. Like if you're gonna reserve a space for rehearsal or recital or something like that, I'm gonna be going in and assigning keys to you. I have that access. You don't quite have it yet. Eventually there's gonna be a form here where when you log in, you can request the, the keys yourself probably next semester. For right now, all I need you to do on this page is go over here to this register here button and set up an account. And what that does is it gives me the option to assign keys to you on the back end. So once you've done that, it takes like two minutes, then all you're gonna do is you're going to send an email. I have a specific email for key things. Please send it to that one because that's gonna help me not lose that email in the sea of everything else. Um, let me see, where did it go? I've made a little template that I can send out as well, if it'll ever open. Bear with me. 
there it is. Okay. So you're going to email this to Percussion Key Rentals. So first of all, this is after you have made your Schedule FM account and after you have gotten yourself registered for your lessons. Things that are important here is that I need your name somewhere. I need your student ID, that's the eight digit number. And I need what keys you're requesting. And I need any special requests like for drum set rooms. Sometimes people have a particular building or floor or whatever. I can't promise that I will uh, be able to you know, make that happen, but I will try. Um, so this is what it should look like. Make sure and include all this information. The last thing is that there is a contract. I'm gonna send, again, this is available in the file section on the Canvas course, but I'm gonna send it out in the chat as well. You need to sign and attach your contract. This is a new contract for fall. And this bold part here is what's super important if you're returning make sure and read that. That's what's changed from previous years. Um, so make sure and read it before you sign it. Okay, and that I think the only other thing I was gonna show you about Schedule FM real quick is this home screen right now after you set up your account and log in, this is what you're gonna see. And this is just for requesting rooms for rehearsals and things like that. Um, that's kind of outside my domain, but if you have questions about that, you need to uh, contact the scheduling office, which is just right around the corner from my office. Amanda Miller's in there. Um, if you need to request a room, she can tell you all about that. And I also have, uh, she sent this out to me today, a brand new uh, manual that just goes over how to use Schedule FM for uh, space reservations. So I'll pop that in the chat for you guys as well. Um, as far as, um, when you have, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing here because that's all you needed. So once um, you have submitted your requests, um, then usually within a, day, within a day or so, I'm gonna respond and either approve or send you a response that's like, okay, you know, I can approve these things or not approve that and this is why. The reasons why you might not be able to get approved for a key. Um, so first of all, we're gonna say up to three keys, uh, you won't need additional approvals, but if you're requesting more than three keys, I know there are sometimes reasons why you might need th more than three keys, but that's going to be dealt with on a case by case basis. Um, and we'll just that's we'll we'll approve that down the line. We'll have to get approval on that one um, for drum set. Again, if you're not in drum set lessons, uh, I can't promise that you'll have you'll be able to get a drum set room and I'll probably put you on a wait list and then we'll talk again during the second week of classes. Um, we also have Bain Hall rooms that are for like recital prep, excerpt practice, things like that. We have very limited available availability there. Um, so if that's something that you're looking for, that will also require permission from the uh, percussion coordinator. Um, which since Professor Ford is going to be on leave, generally speaking, uh, those requests need to go to uh, Professor Rennick. Uh, but uh, I will also be for the drum set ones, you can just email me. Uh, that is a part of your request and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to waitlist it and I'll just send all of them to him in mass. So I'll help with that. Um, renewals are possible. I always post dates for that so that particularly for drum set so that you're not having to move all your stuff out and then back in again for the next semester if you're already registered for drum set lessons and you know that that's what you're going to need. Um, just to make things easier. Uh, I always post dates about that and instructions as well. Um, so I think that's kind of the basics. Um, I'm sure I have, do, are there any questions right now? That's pretty much my spiel. I wanna just, uh, first off, thank you, Carol, for that presentation, because this is an important, we're gonna be going over this information a lot because this is new for everyone, not just percussion. Now, the thing that, uh, Carol mentioned several times the Canvas course. For those of you that are new students, it's not really a course. It's this is it's percussion studio notifications, and it's through the Canvas system, which does support uh, course loads for other classes that you're going to be having as well. But the the percussion studio notifications isn't a course, but it's associated with your lessons. So uh, you need to be on that now. If you're not uh, during your if you went to your orientation already, you should already be in the Canvas. You should be seeing those notifications already. <coughs> Excuse me. 
If you haven't, then you need to email me or Carol and we'll get you in there on that canvas, okay? All right, any other questions for Carol? Okay, let's go on to the audition. Oh, Thank wait, 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 there's one, there's okay. one. Um, are timpani keys or keys in general usually going to be semester long or does it vary? All keys are semester long by semester. Um, so we there are basically three big semesters, fall, spring, and then summer. Summer, we'll talk about that when we get closer, but it's all the summer semesters put together basically. Um, but for fall that your deadline will be December 16th. It's always the Friday of finals week. If you're wanting to practice over the break, um, then you'd need to contact me about renewing for the spring, basically, and that carries that rental would carry you over the through that break. That uh, the winter break is not a semester by itself. But good question. Yeah, we don't do, you know, changing out keys in the middle of the semester. Excellent. And you can still write us uh, with further questions after this is over. Um, I have one more thing I want to add. I'm so sorry. Sure. <laughs> Just heads up the deadline. So you can go ahead and start sending me those requests. And I would appreciate you to go ahead and start doing that so that I don't have them all at once. Um, and you just need to be sure and get those in by Friday, September 2nd, I believe that's the Friday of the first week of classes. Uh, that way I can start looking at um, people who want extra things and whether we have the availability to do that. Thanks, now I'm done. Can I just add, uh, just ask you, Carol, just to make sure the students are clear, how long should they expect to hear from you after they send in their requests? Um, Officially, I say up to give me up to 48 business hours. I'm usually faster than that, but I'm going to warn you, uh, life in my office gets wild close to uh, the beginning because the beginning of classes because I serve all of instrumental studies, not just percussion. So just keep in mind that um, it may take longer when we're like right before classes begin. So again, the sooner the better. Get those requests in. You, you can't request too early. The worst that's going to happen is I say, hey, I can't approve it yet, you know contact me back when you do this or your key will be ready on this date. So um, go ahead and get those requests in please as soon as possible. Okay, thank you again, Carol. Thanks so much. Okay, we're gonna continue talking about the auditions. We talked about the marching band auditions, which starts first. And now we're gonna talk about the wind studies. The wind studies auditions are focused on all the wind studies groups, the wind symphony, the wind orchestra, concert bands, the uh, university band. Of course, the marching band is part of that as well, but this is the round studies, the wind studies for round one and round two are based on the concert groups. And you must apply for those auditions through the wind studies program and the wind studies webpage. Um, they will assign you an audition time uh, that audition happens on Monday, the 22nd of August. Um, professors Rennick and Hall will be listening to those auditions this year. They will group uh, the students into basically an A group and a B group. Uh, that audition is also for percussion ensemble. If you want to be in a percussion ensemble, you have to audition uh, on that date. Now, you may have a different lab. You may be in marching band, and that's going to be your lab for the fall. So you don't have to play round two, but if you wanted to play in a percussion ensemble, you'd play with play in round one. Round one, there is uh, two uh, prepared works. That's again, that's listed on the UNT web, Wind Studies webpage, and there will be sight reading, a short sight reading. Um, uh, I'll have more information up about that uh, again in Canvas tomorrow, but again, you have to go to Wind Studies to sign up, okay? We encourage everybody to audition, absolutely. Uh, round two is on Wednesday, but that, that again will be broken up into two different two different groups uh, and two different times as well. Now the the next uh, group is the orchestra, which is on Tuesday the twenty third. Uh, I've already posted all of the repertoire for the um, orchestra auditions. I want to remind you that the uh, timpanist a timpanist in the symphonic orchestra will receive the Deborah Mashburn Scholarship, which is $1,000. The first chair in percussion will receive the Christopher Dean Scholarship. Now, that I'm just 
We're still waiting on a final approval of uh, Professor Dean's scholarship because it's so recent. But I do know the Timpani scholarship will be available. And I'm hoping that the Professor Dean's scholarship will also be available this fall. So if you want to audition for one of the orchestras or both, obviously, you need to uh, look at that aud audition list that's on Canvas, prepare those excerpts, and then show up that morning, Tuesday morning. There is no sign up previous because the judges don't know who's auditioning. It's a blind audition and they're going to choose the best players from whoever comes and they'll put them into the two orchestras. Okay. Um, the uh, next audition is for the, um, the jazz bands. I'd like for Professor Davis to talk about those, that process for the auditions for the lab bands. Okay. Um, so this is all in Canvas. Hopefully everyone here is on Canvas. If you're not on Canvas, you're missing a lot of very important information, including the uh, audition, the, the jazz audition information. But um, in case you missed it, um, so the first round of jazz auditions, jazz drum set auditions are on, round, are on uh, August 24, from one to three uh, around there. And uh, this is open to everybody. Everybody can audition, and I encourage you to, to do it. If you have an interest in drum set, if you have some history in playing drum set, um, you, maybe you, many of you, I'm sure, played in high school. Um, so uh, it's not limited to just jazz majors, and you, it's, a, it's a good chance to kind of learn where your weaknesses are. As you probably already know, everyone takes drum set here, so it's a good chance to work on um, applying those things that you learn in your lessons and uh, seeing where you're at. So um, the sign up for that is on Canvas in the announcements. And if you just scroll, you'll see an announcement by myself and you can still sign up there. Um, and then if you pass round one, then round two is on the 25th at dun, 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 one o'clock. Um, and for that, also, by the way, for the, the 24th, there is, uh, you'd be performing two charts, one of which is prepared. Again, that chart is on Canvas. Uh, the 25th, you'll, uh, everyone will be playing one prepared chart and two sight reading charts. Um, and I believe that's it, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask away at this time. Doesn't look like it, so. Well, they have, we have one about, are there jazz vibraphone auditions? And yes, yes. Uh, please contact. So Devin, if you could send me an, if you're interested, send me an email uh, to let me know and uh, we can set that up. And that's gonna take place on the 24th. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question regarding um, lap band audition. Say if you wanna like audition for the Latin jazz, at like a uh, that um, lab meets at like a certain time. So, is there a way to like know that if that conflicts with anything else in your schedule before you audition? So, your question is, uh, you want to know what the the meeting times for the lab bands are to to make sure that it's it's worth it to even audition for the lab. Is that right? Specifically, Latin jazz. Uh oh, Tiger. I lost you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Oh, okay. Well, you can, if you're specifically interested in, in Latin jazz, actually, Professor Aponte has uh, a different audition for that, and you can directly speak to him. Um, I don't know. Professor Aponte, do you want to just kind of talk about that briefly? Yeah, of course. Auditions for the Latin jazz. First of all, I just uh, sent uh, recently a canvas announcement about it. You got it, Tiger? Yeah, it's okay. So you, you understand the date and everything for everybody else. The Latin Jazz Lab is a jazz lab credit. So anybody can audition, but the priority always going to be given to the jazz students because they need that lab band credit. Uh, even though also you need, uh, there's a couple of requirements. One of them, or the most important one, will be that you have to take the Beginners of Recuum, which is actually an introductory 
course in Latin rhythms and styles, and you had to pass it successfully in order to audition for the Latin jazz, as well as to the advanced Afro-Cuban ensemble. The reason for that is because of those ensembles are advanced ensembles, and I cannot be teaching you how to play a conga or go into certain uh, very basic fundamentals. It's just pretty much putting repertoire together and to perform concerts, pretty much. There's uh, the certain things that I do in those ensembles and, and in that lab that I keep teaching and giving more information forward, but basically I need to have advanced students for that. Um, the auditions for the Afro Cuban events will be on the 26th, Friday the 26th at 10 a.m. in my office. And everybody, including the former students, had to audition through, through that one. And the Latin Jazz Drum Set and Percussion is going to be August 25th. That's going to be from 10 a.m. to 12. And it's going to be also at Bain Hall 201, both of those audition, auditions. I will post a uh, sign up sheet on the door on Bain Hall 201 on August 18th. Okay, so everybody can can sign up in, uh, in time and I will ask you, please, I have only two hours and then I have to audition. I need to be with Professor Davies doing the drum set auditions. So the closer that you can sign up for those auditions, don't, don't give me too much spaces because I need to be uh, at the drum set audition right away. So I ask you that as a favor. Any questions about that, Tiger? Anybody else? Yes, I have a question. Um, Professor Ponte, what sort of things will we be tested on during the Latin jazz audition? For the Latin jazz audition, you will be tested on bongo, timbal, and conga. And you will be playing, doing some playing alongs we and some side reading as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? If you still have any questions, feel free to contact me at jose.aponte at unt.edu. Okay. Thank you. We have one question on there for the uh, prepared audition, the jazz lab uh, for Quincy, I think. Are you allowed to bring our music? Uh, no, everyone's going to use the same charts, the same chart. So, yeah, the sight reading is so important for all these auditions because the uh, directors want, uh, players that, that can adjust quickly, understand what's on the page and interpret it correctly, uh, not to be perfect, but just to be, have a good reading skill. So all these auditions, whether they be for the orchestra or they be for the, uh, wind studies groups uh, or the jazz bands, there is always reading as a big part of the audition, not the only part, but one of the critical parts. So this reading is important. That's what um, Professor Davis is referring to there. Also, I may add, sorry, Professor Ford, uh, Jackson, you were referring to the drum set or percussion positions on the Latin jazz? Um, I'm probably going to shoot my shot for all the positions. So yeah, just the whole thing. For drum set is, uh, I'm going to call a couple of styles and you're going to play along and I'm going to give you something to sign read. Okay? Okay. I just want to be clear with you. Thank you. Yes. For I think that's a good philosophy, Jackson, and anybody and everybody else here is that you don't uh, put all of your, you know, um, ambitions into just one audition. It's good to audition two or three types of things, and then you can adjust your schedule to make it work for you. And I will tell you that all of the, the directors, like with the wind studies groups and the jazz groups, they're super flexible because we have so many talented students that are doing different things. So if you have a conflict between two ensembles, don't just go, oh, I have to choose one over the other. No, you probably, there's a way to, to make that work, but you'll have to communicate with the directors uh, to you know get their input and, and figure out how that's gonna happen. Okay. Thank you guys. Uh, if there's any further questions about auditions, you can always write to these directors uh, directly or to me or to um, the Canvas notifications that we've been talking so much about. Okay, this is, um, we're getting close to the end here. Uh, I just want to point out a few basic things that I know a lot of you have been um, involved with. As the students coming in in the fall, you must 
fill out your student a lesson availability form. It's on the UNT percussion webpage. I'm going to send you the link in Canvas of how to get to that. Uh, you need to fill that out at the very latest by the 22nd of August, hopefully sooner. Okay. Uh, that's been updated. Uh, that that uh, file has been updated. Also, the um, uh, request to perform at departmentals. Our departmentals are a big part of our program. Uh, they're not there just, oh, I want to go when I want to go. You have to go. If you want to make an A in your lessons, you have to attend. You have to perform. We're there to support each other. We're there to play for each other. We're there to go in there and perform and make mistakes so we learn how to do it better the next time. Uh, we're there to celebrate uh, hard work and really to uh, allow people to express themselves in these performances. Yes, you're required to play only once, but many students will play a lot more than just once. Okay, so that's on Fridays at one o'clock. It is not an official class, but it's tied to your lesson grades. So you must go. You do have two absences without any penalty at all. But after those two absences, your lesson grades and each lesson goes down a, a letter grade. So we want you to be there. It's an important aspect of your education. It's an important way for us to be able to share what's it's important. And so you can know what's going on with um, all of the studios that are happening in percussion. OK, we'll also have our guest artists there. We have uh, some incredible guest artists. Um, Quincy, would uh, Professor Davis, would you like to speak about the, the drum set um, uh, clinician? Um, yes, uh, we're, we're having a uh, wonderful drummer, Jeff Clapp, uh, who spent a lot of time in New Orleans. He's going to be focusing on uh, New Orleans grooves and uh, that approach to playing. Great, great player, great, great guy. Um, you should also follow him on Instagram. He's always putting a lot of things up, but he'll be here. And uh, I think everyone's going to be very inspired. Wonderful. In addition to um, uh, Jeff, we're going to have uh, Jihei Jung, uh, an amazing marimbist. Uh, you, if you haven't seen her play, you haven't been on a computer or YouTube uh, in a long, long time because she is incredible. She was with the uh, with us at the American Percussion Seminar this summer, and it was outstanding. She's going to be giving not just a clinic, but also recital on October the 21st. Also on September the 12th, now this is a Monday, but this is uh, um, was the best timing situation. Uh, Professor Michael Burrett will be on campus. He'll be giving a clinic to the freshman class at 11 a.m., I'll also be giving a clinic at 12 to the percussion ensemble there. All of these classes are open to you to come in to, uh, to watch, uh, work with him and hear his presentation. Uh, so we have those three right now scheduled. Of course, we're going to start off the semester with uh, Dave Hall giving a clinic on our Friday departmentals to uh, celebrate his um, first semester here at UNT. So we have a lot of really great things planned. Um, I'm going to put up the calendar in Canvas for what I have right now. I do not have all of the student uh, recitals, but I will put up what I do have. And um, because I'm in Europe right now, unfortunately, Schedule FM doesn't work outside of the States. So I can't give you a lot of details that I would normally do, but I will fill that in when I get back to Texas in a few weeks. Okay, looking ahead, just to let you guys know what's going on in the spring, uh, for Team EA, the Texas Music Educators Association National Conference is going to, our Wind Symphony is going to be one of the featured performers uh, there, which is outstanding. And we're going to have an incredible um, guest artist in percussion that are going to be playing with, with the Wind Symphony. I can't tell you yet who it is, but it's going to be really exceptional. And then later in April, UNT is going to be hosting the Percussive Arts Society Regional Day of Percussion at UNT. This is a regional day that's going to be with Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. And uh, performers, teachers, and guest artists are coming from all over to be with us there on that weekend, which is April the 21st and 22nd. Okay. Uh, we have a few minutes now. I was planning to have this session be an hour. So if you would like to ask any questions of any of us, now is a great time. You can do it verbally or write in the chat. Um, so I see one is here from Adam. 
Uh, welcome, Adam. It says, is there a repertoire list or something available for me to prepare for the percussion ensemble auditions? Yes, there is. And you're going to find that information at the Win Studies uh, webpage. It's um, Win Studies, I believe, at unt.edu. Uh, but you can do a search for that. That has the prepared music and I uh, will tell you about it has just two short prepared selections and then you'll be working on sight reading that, that's it now you will select a short excerpt from a solo uh, that you're playing it could the solo could be on timpani marimba vibraphone or snare drum but you will play a short excerpt of your solo that you will choose uh, so we won't be uh, selecting that information now the reason that's set up this way is because Students are in lots of different situations over the summer. Some students have access to instruments. Some have very limited access. So we want to let you show us your best stuff uh, on the audition. We want you to put your best foot forward here, and you can select that short excerpt, but you will also be required to play a short snare drum, prepared solo, and a short um, xylophone excerpt. Any other questions about the auditions? Did you say that the round two auditions would be on Wednesday, the 24th? That is correct. Wind Studies has released that. I believe they start at, Kaylee, I think it's 1230 or one o'clock in the afternoon. It's, it's in the afternoon for round two. Uh, I, I want to just add, um, uh, I just lost my thought. I'll, I'll come back to it. <laughs> All righty. Uh, any other questions that, that uh, uh, I had a question. Sure. Uh, Ethan, do you want to go first? No, you can go. I'll go after you. Okay. This is about the, uh, the Latin jazz percussion ensembles uh, audition. So let's say I only want to audition on one thing. Let's say that's be like a uh, conga. Do I, could I only audition on that? Or would you like us to audition on every single percussion? Trinity, no, you have to audition on the three of them. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I have a I have a question about like how you guys run uh like performances during the semester and juries and stuff. Like, do you have like uh freshman recitals and sophomore recitals and stuff like that, or like uh recital time where we'd have to perform in during the semester? Ethan, that's a really great question. And almost all of your answers are listed in our percussion manual, which is on the UNT percussion webpage. Now, I'm in the process of updating it for this year, but none of the updating is, is going to change the things we're talking about right now. Um, there, This is a lot, which you just asked about, like with barriers and recitals, except that that's, this is a lot to cover. You should be enrolled in the percussion methods course uh, that... Um, Professor Rennick is going to be teaching this fall at 11 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. All freshmen should be listed in that group. They're going to be, uh, Professor Rennick's going to be going over a lot of these details with you at that time. They'll be, you'll have more time to discuss it. And because there's lots of parameters that you want to want to take advantage of. Um, but to answer your questions, UNT is the largest uh, college of music in the country. We really do not have facilities to have freshman recitals and sophomore recitals. I know very few schools that do do that. They're typically on the much smaller side. However, we do have some junior recitals, um, some are non-degree recitals, and then of course the required senior recital. But this, there's a lot more to it than just, just a recital. And uh, that's the process that Professor Rennick will be speaking with you about uh, in that class. Are you registered for that class, Ethan? I am, uh, so I wasn't, I'm hopefully coming to the school next fall, um, transferring from MTSU, mm -hmm. but, uh, cause I couldn't make the auditions for this year. So I'm just trying to figure out a lot of like how the school flow works, but, um, I was gonna think about emailing you or Mr. Rennick afterwards about more about that stuff. Okay. Well, that's a good, this is good that you're here tonight and checking it out. Um, Transfer students need to go through that whole process of being, you know, finding out which credits are going to uh, be transferred. But when you come into percussion, you have to start at the beginning and pass off all those barriers. So that's why you should be looking at our web page because <clears throat> it lists all of the barriers, all the books, all the pages that you have to be able to play for a faculty panel 
uh, to be able to move into the higher levels. And that could accelerate your potential graduation date. Uh, that's the biggest problem that happens with transfer students is that they that can delay them if they're if they're not um, if you don't are knowledgeable about those barriers. And so now you have time to to work on that stuff. That's good. Great. Uh, I just remember what I wanted to say to the jazz majors. Uh, uh, as always, at the beginning of the semester, there's always a uh, departmental that features various upperclassmen. Uh, so if you're interested in performing on that first uh, departmental, it's, it's just one, right? Right, Mark? Just just one student? Yeah, we, we can or, do one or two. Typically, we have maybe four or five performers. And okay. um, what Professor Davis is talking about is not just drum set, too. It could be if anybody has a special piece you've prepared over the summer that you're ready to play, uh, we could accept, again, maybe up to five. Uh, performers on that first departmental. So if you're interested in playing drum set, just uh, let me know and uh, ideally send me a recording so I can hear what you want to do. And this is to upperclassmen, to the new students, uh, you're, you, you would not be considered, so. All right, guys, we are about out of time. I want to take a moment to tell you that the teachers that you're going to be working with this year, I'm talking to the returning students, to the new students, that these people are world-class. I'm telling you, I learn things from them every week, every day. I love working at UNT and being part of that community and the family there. And uh, because we're not there about egos, no one is there to, to be on a platform. We're all there to help each other, to grow, and to create the best opportunities we can for you. And really, uh, you want to take everything that these people can um, offer to you. You may you may get a suggestion and you may think in the back of your head, that's not really how I want to do it, or that's not how I was told before. Fine. That's great. You should welcome that information because it has a different viewpoint and you want to explore that. The whole idea of going to a new place is not to do the things you've been doing. It's to open your mind to what's possible that you haven't thought about or something that hasn't been suggested to you. So I'm just telling you, I'm excited for you because it's going to be one of the precious times in your life of these these um, years at North Texas and uh, to leading up to your graduation. So I, I wish you all the best. I can't wait to hear your music. I'm excited for that. Okay, here let me follow finish up first is thanking the faculty. Um, and also, if you have any questions that you want to ask me or any of these fine uh, uh, faculty members, write them through their email. You can find that on the UNT percussion webpage as well. Um, and I will be posting uh, probably by tomorrow afternoon updated information from this discussion. Also going to take the recording from tonight and put it on my uh, YouTube channel. That's the quickest, fastest way I can get it to you uh, and or to those of you that couldn't come tonight as well. Okay. Any final questions? Great. Thank you so much. And everybody have a beautiful rest of the day. For me, it's the evening. And uh, I look forward to seeing you later in, um, in this month. Okay. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Bye.